morning, agents from the FBI Southwest Indiana Violent Crime Task Force, the Evansville Police Department, and the Vandenberg County Sheriff's Office carried out search warrants after an eight-month-long investigation. In total, I believe we have 19 people that have been arrested to date. Although this is an ongoing investigation, we expect that there will be future arrests. This investigation started in January of 2014 after Evansville police officer hands assisted by Evansville Mall security identified a car being used as a getaway vehicle and several thefts. Um, and, and from there, the investigation grew. After several months, um, we, have, we have arrested and, and will be charging this week on the state side 15 individuals. Uh, they will be charged with corrupt business influence, which is a Class C felony, carries a penalty of two to eight years. In addition to that, five of those suspects. Philpott, Walsh, Reeder, Ford, and Avery will face criminal gang enhancement for their participation in this, and that could potentially double their sentences where they would face two to 16 years in prison. As a result of this investigation as well, another suspect, Mario Butler, was arrested and charged with dealing in a narcotic drug, a level three felony. He faces three to 16 years. And we had a juvenile that was charged um, with burglary. His name will not be released because of his age. Two individuals have also been federally indicted, um, and U.S. District Attorney Brookman is here this morning to uh, give you details on that, and he will speak shortly. People will question what kind of impact does this have on our society, and what does it have on our community? Anytime you have a situation like this where people are ordering up goods to be stolen and brought in, this logically leads to a variety of crimes. Everything from shoplifting to theft to robbery, burglary, um, breaking into cars, those types of things. And so we think that this, ha this is going to have a large impact on our community as a whole. Retail thefts in this area have risen sharply over the years. From 2012 to 2013 alone, retailers saw an increase of 3 to $4 million stolen merchandise. And this leads to higher prices for all of us. This morning's operation went very smoothly, and I want to thank everyone involved. Uh, the FBI, the Evansville Police Department, Vanderbilt County Sheriff's Office for their tremendous work uh, in the efforts this morning. And additionally, I'd like to thank the retailers we work very closely with, specifically Home Depot, Walmart, and Macy's. Um, they work with um, law enforcement in this investigation from beginning to end and, and were a great asset to us um, in, in making these cases. Uh, with that, I'm going to introduce Assistant U.S. Attorney Brookman to discuss the federal indictments. Well, good afternoon. Um, we've made copies of the federal indictment available, and uh, you can get the facts from that. But I guess what I would touch on is that uh, defendants Hudson and Rupert were the um, uh, the movers, or the, the principal operators in the uh, interstate fencing of this stolen property, and they've been charged federally uh, with those crimes. But uh, you know, these cases don't just uh, appear out of thin air. They are the result of uh, months of hard work by uh, Evansville police detectives and. Uh, FBI agents and task force officers here in Evansville and uh, a word should be said too about uh, uh, Deputy Prosecutor Justin Brandt and uh, Assistant U.S. Attorney Todd Schellenbarger who are the main prosecutors on both the state and federal cases. They they put a lot of time in as well and, and done some really good work to this point. Um, we look forward to uh, uh, prosecuting these cases, these two defendants in federal court. Um, the investigation is ongoing and I would urge you to uh, uh, keep a lookout for additional bulletins down the road. Thank you. Time we'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Hey, can you elaborate a little bit more? Any are narcotics or other illegal substances really a part of this, or is this just sort of a luck of the draw? We found someone with drugs on him. There, this is not. This was not primarily a, a something where we were looking for drugs. Uh, we we did find uh, narcotics um, involved with with the one individual who was charged. Uh, we do believe that some of the other individuals were users um, and were using um, some of the proceeds from this to buy narcotics, uh, but at this point, um, those are the drug arrests that we have. Do you know the total value of the items stolen? <clears throat> so the, for, the, for the federal indictment purposes, there just has to be over $5,000 of, of property, um, but the amount, the total amount is well in excess of that. Um, we don't have a specific number. Um, somewhere down the road, we'll have a better idea of that. But we know that there's been, uh, uh, you know, $500 purses, 
um, high-end uh, equipment from um, uh, hardware, things like that. Uh, this is all expensive stuff. We're not talking about, um, you know, just chewing gum from the convenience store. So there's a lot of money involved. We're still early on in the investigation. We, we have, uh, obviously, uh, searched several businesses and homes this morning, uh, looking for information, computers, those types of things. Um, so eventually we will have more of an accounting. Um, this is an instance where people are stealing stuff and, and getting it for free, um, going and selling it, and then they're reselling it. Um, oftentimes, um, it was being sold on the open market for less than the retailer could purchase it. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're talking about, I, I think, easily hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, what we're actually going to be able to pen to these specific de defendants, I don't know. Um, it's still too early in the investigation um, as, as we progress through the investigation and are able to get those numbers, uh, we'll be releasing them at some time. Uh, just given the, the time I have to read over the, the federal indictment, they, they use eBay as a, as a conduit to, to sell off some of the stolen property, am I understanding that correctly? Yes. How difficult is it to investigate those particular cases because those goods are being sent all over the, all over the country um, using an online site? Um, I don't know if that complicates your investigation or, or the way you prosecute those types of things. Yeah, it, it does present a challenge because it's a, it can be national or even international. Um, that's the beauty of having a, of EPD partnering with the FBI. Um, it allows them to have a much longer, uh, larger reach than they might normally have on a typical investigation. So the FBI is very good at, at handling those sorts of national or even international investigations, and they did that in this case. Um, and that's a, that brings me to another point that I forgot to mention. This is just another uh, excellent example of the cooperation that we have down here in southwest Indiana between the state and the feds. And uh, we're real pleased to uh, be partners with Vanderbilt County and with EPD, and we hope to continue to do that. Uh, we've, we've said that a lot on drug cases, but it extends to other cases as well. So, so it's, a, it's a real plus for us to have that down here. And, and the federal charge they were uh, indicted on was uh, corruption or it's a, interstate, it's a conspiracy to commit interstate transportation of stolen property. And what is that punishable by? It's punishable by either uh, 10 years or five years in prison. Okay. How is it that uh, the, the ringleaders um, appear to be getting a, face a, a smaller sentence than, or a lesser sentence than some of the guys that were uh, charged here locally? Well, I think sometimes it's a function of uh, your criminal history, for one thing. Um, it's also, you know, in federal court, we have, uh, we bring different things to bear as far as uh, uh, minimum sentences that you have to serve or for minimum percentage of your sentence that you might have to serve in federal court as opposed to state prison. Um, so there's a number of factors in there to decide whether somebody's going to go federal or, or state. Um, also, that those people that were involved with transporting things uh, across the country, uh, the federal court typically provides a good venue for that because there is so much of it that's outside the state of Indiana, outside the county. It, this was an excellent investigation by all those involved. I mean, we, the, the officers took something that was as simple as someone taking a purse from a store and were able to evolve this and, and cast the net wide enough that we were able to see not only other um, thefts, but, but the organization. And then to be able to trace it back and to find the eBay accounts and to find the transportation across state lines, those types of things. I mean, this was really a good investigation. Um, and. Our, our thanks go out to law enforcement agencies that dedicated the staff and the resources to do this. Without, without the FBI, without the police department um, stepping forward and putting people on this and, and giving them the leeway and the time, I mean, we all know budget constraints and, and how difficult it is to have manpower to do things. The manpower that they were able to put into this, in addition to what the retailers stepped forward with, allowed us to get to the point that we are today, to be able to make this many arrests and hopefully to have this big of an impact on our community. And, and you touched on it just a little while ago, but uh, obviously 19 people, that's a pretty big net, as you just said. Is there, is it on your radar that that net could be even bigger? We're talking, you know, several dozen people. Well, as, as the people are brought in, as, as they've been arrested, um, obviously attempts are made to interview those people. Um, many of those people are, are going to give statements and further implicate not only each other, but, but we expect that they will implicate others as well. Can you expand upon the relationship the, the uh, if you 
take a look at the indictment, there's allegations with respect to deal makers, and uh, that was a location where the thieves who were committing the thefts at uh, uh, Home Depot and Macy's uh, were bringing their merchandise to, and uh, then the, the leaders of deal makers, uh, including Mr. Rupert, are alleged to have placed uh, essentially ads on eBay offering those brand new items for sale that individuals using eBay buyers, which are located throughout the United States and in foreign countries, would agree on a price and buy those items, and then deal makers and Rupert would transfer those in interstate commerce to the buyers. And so uh, the main allegation is that deal makers was, was uh, placing the ads and so forth on, on eBay to allow the products to get shipped out. And there were uh, deal makers has a location in Newburgh, Indiana, and in Henderson, Kentucky. And there were search warrants executed at both of those places this morning. I wanted to touch briefly on the criminal gang enhancement. In, in Indiana, criminal gang activity is when you have three or more people that are working together to commit felonies. Uh, we're not going to be obviously we've got 72 hours to file charges, but we're not going to be alleging that they're a member of a specific gang. What we're going to be alleging is is that. This is a group of four or five people that are working together, recruiting people, and, and basically running an operation that is then going out and committing felonies. So I don't want there to be any confusion as far as, you know, we're trying to say that they're a specific member of this gang. That's not what's required by statute. Sounds like you pinned down Kyle Jones, and then Kyle basically led you to everybody else. Is that kind of how things played out? Was he very instrumental in, in the investigation? He certainly identified in, in the press release that you have, and it is, I think the best way to describe it is that the Evansville Police Department saw a pattern of activity at the mall here in Evansville, and it was that thread that was followed all the way through to this larger organization that's detailed in the indictment and in the state charges today. But it was really conscientious effort on the part of the Evansville police officers who's job it is to kind of survey the activity out at the mall, look for patterns. They saw a pattern here and follow that thread and it, and it developed this entire case. Obviously the investigation took eight months. Um, is, uh, do you have any indication how long this ring had been operating prior to uh, you know, the excellent police work getting started in January? Um, the best indication we have at this time is that it may have existed for uh, several years. Like I said, these are very difficult cases to pin down. Um, it, it's a difficult business to be a retailer. It, it's difficult for you to open your doors every morning knowing someone's going to come in and steal merchandise from you. But, but if you talk to any retailer, they're going to tell you that's exactly what happened. And, and over the last couple of years, we've seen this dramatic rise um, in, in retail theft. And, um, you know, there's a couple ways you can handle that. You can go after individual thieves, um, but what, what took the time and the, and the energy in this was getting the entire organization. And, and we're, we're satisfied and happy with this investigation, the way that it's gone. Um, obviously, we're not naive. We don't think these are the only people out there doing this. And, and so we, we will, all of our agencies will continue to strive to, to find more of these people and, and more of these organizations. Um, this this invest, particular investigation came together very well over the course of several months. And, and quite frankly, no agency here could have done it by by themselves. Um, FBI was very instrumental. Obviously, the police department for piecing this together to begin with, um, cooperation with, with the U.S. Attorney's Office, um, everybody coming together, um, the Sheriff's Department um, coming together and, and, and actually investigating and, and following this from beginning to end. It's, it's been it's been quite a process. It's been a very lengthy investigation, but, but it's something I think everyone's very satisfied with at this point. Will there be any attempt to get any I mean, they're all over the country from eBay? Can you get any of these items back? You guys want to address that? The, uh, the persons that acquired the items on eBay may have uh, a defense of lack of awareness that the items were stolen. So uh, we probably would focus on recovering only specific items that might have some evidentiary value to prove the case versus all of the items that were sold. But the individual defendants are responsible for restitution uh, if convicted, and uh, there is an alleg allegation contained in the, in the federal indictment with respect to forfeiture of assets involving uh, the uh, criminal enterprise. And so, uh, 
those are some avenues that might be available to try to recover and, and make the victims whole. Todd, could, like, could you give us a, the closest estimate to a monetary amount? So is it $100,000, $250,000? Uh, not really comfortable doing that right now uh, because the, it's an ongoing investigation. There's a, a lot of records still left to review and the results of the search warrant today. Uh, of course, it's over $5,000 as alleged in the indictment. And uh, I think there's an estimate in the press release as well. But we're talking about substantial amount. Uh, substantial value, the items that are taken are high value items like uh, uh, designer purses, valuable uh, power tools, and uh, valuable electronics. I think the best guess that I can come at is what I, what, what I told you earlier. I, I think between 2012 and 2013, retailers in this area saw an increase uh, of overall retail theft of three to four million dollars, if not more. Uh, what we're able to find in, in this investigation is going to be a number and what we're able to tie to those particular defendants. I don't believe that, I don't believe anyone's alleging that they stole three to five million dollars worth of stuff, but, but I do think that you're going to see a number in the hundreds of thousands, possibly even into the, to the seven digits uh, when, when we get done with this, uh, but it, it, right now it's too early to tell. Talk about the, the shock value. Uh, I mean, you've got nearly two dozen people charged. You know, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of merchandise stolen. Do you hope that busting this big and elaborate of a ring has a, you know, a ripple effect that permeates to possibly other rings that are operating in this area? Well, if you don't have people buying stolen merchandise, then you don't have as much shoplifting. You don't have as many burglaries. You don't have as many home invasions looking for property. That's what, that's what we're interested in. And so being able to get people at a higher level and not just the person that's going into the store and taking things, we think will have a ripple effect. Um, like I said, this, this investigation is far from over. This is the first time that we're able in mass to get these people in here and interview them and get them to give statements. They may well flip on each other. They may well flip on other organizations doing the same thing. We, this is not the end of this investigation. We will continue investigating this um, as, as long as we can and to, Get as many people as we can because like, like you mentioned the, the ripple effect on this is huge and if we can dry up the people that are buying stolen merchandise then hopefully not as much merchandise will be stolen um, prices can come down at retailers because they're not going to have to absorb these losses and people's homes and cars won't, won't be broken into to recover items.